Good evening, everyone, and a warm welcome to all of you on behalf of Team Aditya Birla Education Academy. I hope all of you are safe and uh, have started with your online classes and uh, with your students, and you're keeping well. It gives me a great pleasure to introduce today's speaker to all of you. It's none other than Ms. Snitta Ramaswamy, who is the Chief Mentor for Alpha Learning. Ms. Snitta is a passionate educator with a career spanning over four decades. She has a Master's in Education and an Honours in Physics and Chemistry. She truly believes in the epitome of a lifelong learner. And we have her here who is a PhD candidate in education from the University of Mumbai. Nitya continues to learn along with her PhD degree and is an auditor for the ISO 21001 standards for educational institutions. She believes that education is the birthright of every child. She's gone extra miles to enable children with different abilities and hence has earned a Lifetime Achievement Award from RCI which is a huge thing in my mind that she is a spokesperson for children with different abilities when nobody actually hears them out. She's also done a lot of work in the prevention of sexual offense against children and played a key role while POXCO was drafted. She started the nationwide movement, I Care, while she was with ZLearn at that point in time. And when you speak to Nitya, the first thing that she will always say is, do what works well for the child. So here, I now ask Ms. Nitya to continue for today's topic, which is on how to build in resilience among our children in these adverse times when we actually need them to build in skills along with coping up and life skills we have Ms. Nitya speaking to us on how, as teachers, we can build resilience amongst our students. Over to Ms. Nitya. Uh, thank you, Anuradha. That was uh, very kind of you. A lot of good words. Well, yes, uh, it's important we are all here because of our children. And as educators, what has to be the compass for us always is, are we doing what is right for the child? With that note, I begin, uh, but I, I just have a question to all of you. We, we all talk about the intelligence portions to be developed. We talk about the, uh, the uh, you know, the emotional quotient to be developed. And we also talk about the spiritual quotient to be developed. But what is more important is in today's time, are we developing the resilience within each one of us so that we are able to increase our adversity quotient. When we talk about adversity, have, has any one of us wondered, where does this word adversity come from? What is the root? What is the word origin of adversity? Anybody? You could write it on the chat. We can have an interactive session. Okay. Adversity is from the Latin word, which is adver, means to go in the direction of, to move in the direction. So the word origin itself tells you to move in a particular direction is how the word adversity was born. And it's very, very important that we look at it with a positive angle. In today's times, are we teaching every child to convert an obstacle into an opportunity? Let's see what happened in times of yore. How did parents, how did children convert every opportune moment that came across to them? It could be an obstacle, it could be a difficulty, it could be anything, but they turned it around to make it a positive attribute which they developed and they sailed the sea of adversity by adjusting the sails with resilience. So now, uh, look at this picture. Can any one of you guess who it is? And this quote, 
there was somebody who said this quote the only thing worse than being blind having sight is not having no vision who do you think said that you can use the chat boxes uh, to put in your responses well it was none other than helen keller thank you shruti shruti yadav has said that yes it was helen keller all of us know helen was a lovely brightly sprightly child till she was 2 years old and then there was the strange fever which struck her and she was left deaf mute and blind however what didn't die within her was the intellect like that's what they say you know adversity is a storm when it blows across you it takes away it blows all that it can and can do nothing about what it can't and that's exactly what happened in helen keller's life her intellect was intact her confidence was intact and her inner being was intact now how did the parents find this out they found that helen keller played with a little girl called martha who was also 3 years old helen was 3 years old they would play happily and at no point of time did martha feel helen keller was differently able martha treated her just as she would treat any other playmate and they played together and that was such a lesson that the adults around learned they thought that if this little child can see nothing wrong with her why are we looking at it as something different so maybe there is something within this child which can be enabled which can be kindled which can be blossomed and that thought that happy children playing is what set the thought rolling in their mind and that, and remember if today helen keller is a legend the seed was sown by the little girl called martha martha was their butler's daughter she was her playmate and for her she just had a friend it didn't matter whether she could see whether she could hear whether she could speak they could just play and at one point of time they realized that helen keller was getting bored because martha was not able to keep up with the intellect of helen keller is when the parents realized that come on we need to do something and guess whom did they go to they were advised to go to none other than graham bell how many of us know that graham bell had a mother who was hearing impaired she had lost her hear, ability to hear from the time she was a 2 year old child but that didn't deter her. she became a mother she raised a very happy child and when bell was growing up the father was trying to tell him and the environment was trying to tell him can you make something so that all people who are hearing impaired can hear and that is how bell was tinkering he changed that obstacle he changed that situation into an opportunity he started tinkering with a lot of things in his neighbor's workshop and again he had a friend who said come let's do something and that is how they found out those big instruments and by accident a telephone was discovered he was trying to make something so that people can hear and at the end so that his mother could hear and at no point of time parents and friends children whoever is listening to this at no point of time did graham bell's father make him feel that he had a mother who was disabled it was just another function which was not there like i am wearing spectacles because i am short sighted and many of us wear a hearing aid because we can't hear sometimes we take a stick because we can't walk so what what is within us is still there and that is how graham bell guided helen keller to to a kind of you know uh, listen and make certain certain noises were made but that was not really effective for her because she was completely deaf and then what happened was they were struggling they said where do we go where do we go and that is when they met louis braille now when you look at louis braille's childhood you will be very surprised Louis Braille was playing with his father's unit this garage and there a splinter went into his eye and he was rendered blind that didn't deter him Louis Braille's father said 
son, come on. Let us see how best you've got your hands, you've got your senses, you've got your ears, you've got your mouth, you've got your thinking, your intellect. Move to Charles Barbier's school. Now, who do you think Charles Barbier was? Charles Barbier was none other than the general who was working with Napoleon. And imagine, Napoleon was, was uh, I will come to his childhood, but before that, let me finish the, how adversity became an opportunity for Helen Keller. And therefore, the related stories, how the, uh, adversity became an opportunity for Graham Bell, how adversity became an opportunity for Charles Barbier. What Charles Barbier was a general in Napoleon's army. And those days, they were not able to see at night when they had to fight. So Napoleon had asked Barbier, can you discover something so that my soldiers can read at night? And that is how the race writing was invented. But it was not to the level Braille was developed. So when Louis Braille went over there, he realized that it was fine. It was a kind of a springboard for Louis Braille. That moment was an opportunity for him and he developed Braille and the rest is history. So you will see whether it is Helen Keller or Graham Bell or Louis Braille or Charles Barbier, each one of them in the winds of adversity adjusted their sails to discover something, to invent something, to, life, to make life move on and the rest is history. Now I have another interesting question for you. So we saw one chain of events of how adversity and how parents, parents made the biggest difference. Please remember that your action is the encyclopedia from where your child learns. It's not about what you say. It's not about anything else. It's more about what you do, what you feel. And that is known as effective parenting. It is not effective. It is learn to look at the child with the affective lens. The affective domain in every parent is what was woken up. If you see Helen Keller's parents, if you see Alexander Graham Bell's parents, if you see Louis Braille's parents, they said it's okay. This, this, this happened. Seize the moment and make it your opportunity and move on. Excellent. There is Miss Jyoti Singh who has said that it is Bal Gangadhar Tilak. Swaraj is my birthright and I shall have it. I remember when I walked into Bal Gangadhar's birth home in Ratnagiri, I literally had tears because every room was echoing with his presence and his uh, confidence and his ability to stand for what is right. Now, where do you think he learned this from? At, at all points of time, he decided to do what is right. And this started when he was a child. When he was a little boy, in the primary section, all the children in the class were planning to throw peanuts so that the teacher would slip and fall. Now it is an adverse situation. Lokmanya Tilak didn't like it. So he didn't participate. He said, I'm not going to throw the peanuts. I'm going to just keep quiet. And then the teacher walked in and right enough, she slipped on the peanuts. So the teacher asked Lokmanya Tilak, I know he, she asked everyone to stand up and she said, I'm going to punish all of you. Lokmanya Tilak did not stand up. He sat down. So the teacher said, Tilak, why are you not standing up? So Tilak said, ah, but I didn't throw the peanuts. I didn't do it. The teacher asked him, Tilak, but you, were, you knew that the plan was being hatched. Yes or no? Tilak said, yes. You could have told an adult that a plan is being hatched so that a teacher can be prevented from falling down and hurting yourself. Did you tell an adult? No. Do you agree that you're part of the problem also? Yes. Do you think you have made a mistake? Yes. Then stand up. That was a life's lesson for, for Tilak. It was a tough situation for him. But he learned the biggest life lesson for him that you may not make the mistake. But if you're part of the mistake, you are also at fault. And that was his guiding force. He said, this Swaraj is my birthright. I shall have it. I shall have it the right way. And all his mentees he guided, even when Mahatma Gandhi landed from South Africa and he was very 
एक्साइटेड ही सर हम ये करेंगे हम वो करेंगे ये भी कर सकते हैं वो भी कर सकते हैं तिलक सेन ऑब्जर्व ऑब्जर्व डोंट बिकम पार्ट ऑफ द प्रॉब्लम always learn to be part of the solution so the adverse situation taught tilak how to be part of a solution always and never to be part of the problem and if you are part of the problem have the courage of conviction to accept it and that is a very important resilient attribute that he developed in himself okay so that is one story now let's move on to the next next uh, little bit of interaction that we'll have who do you think he is i can see my friend rukmini getting very excited to answer but i guess other parents can answer anybody okay yes i've got the answer it is none other than winston churchill so what about winston churchill comes to your mind the minute we talk about winston churchill what comes to your mind any one okay did you know that winston churchill was a, yes he was a very tough leader and uh, when he was young when he was a little boy he would stammer he couldn't talk every time he would he would uh, say a word there was a stammer and he would get very diffident and he was he was always sad that people would tease him because he was a stammerer so when he came home one day with tears in his eyes his dad looked at him and he said what happened he said people tease me so he said okay people tease you look at the sentence that you are using what is the object in the sentence people okay subject is people and what is the object in the sentence me why are you becoming an object in the sentences that you are using you have to change the way you use your language you have to change the way you construct your sentences because you are here to win you are not here to forget for, to 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 kind of succumb you are here to succeed go inside look at yourself in the mirror and say i can speak and so this boy took it very seriously he went into his room and every day he would talk in front of the mirror he would talk in front of the mirror and he realized that there are certain consonants when he uses in the construction of the sentences when he stammers even when you see children who stammer they will not stammer in all the words they will stammer in certain consonants it could be s is a consonant which most children stammer with s th and the next one is the th because of the palate so if you are able to identify that you can correct it for the children or you can tell the children you construct your sentences in such a way that you are able to at that point find another word this is enabling the child to overcome that adversity of speech we cannot join with the rest of them and say that uh, uh, see he is stammering in ka stammering hai in it doesn't matter all of us all of us have problems no none of us in this world is there who can say i don't have a problem we can have a problem in the way we think we have a problem in the way we feel we can have a problem in the way we do like for instance i am very fast in whatever i do especially i can cook so fast but at the same time i would spill i know it is my challenge i'm present to it and therefore i i i can do with four four gas cylinders four gas flames i can work but i will make it things messy as long as you are able to make your child be present to his challenge and guide him to overcome you are developing resilience in the child and for him 
that speech that speech became the most powerful tool for winston churchill his famous speech when he spoke to the that I, even today when you talk of any second world war or like when i when i discuss it with my husband who's very thorough with it he says one reason why the allies won the second world war was the motivation and the speeches given by a leader like winston churchill okay i'll just read what he said one minute what is that famous speech yeah he said we shall defend our island whatever the cost may be we shall fight on the beaches we shall fight on the landing grounds we shall fight in the fields and in the streets we shall fight in the hills we shall never surrender never surrender and this was the very same words his father had used to winston churchill saying never surrender to what people talk about you it is in you to bring out the best never surrender is what drove winston churchill to be a great leader he was well yes he had challenges i'm not saying he was the the most ideal leader one could have had that doesn't matter but as a child he was able to overcome that adverse situation of a speech and you see all his speeches will not begin with an s at all once that beginning happens he could speak and that took time for him to understand and that is another situation where the parent played a very critical role we saw a friend play a role in martha's case in graham bell's case a father play a role in louis braille's case as well as in winston churchill's case a teacher play a role in lokmanya tilak's case that means all of us as adults have a responsibility towards the next generation to weave in the adversity quotient in their day to day life and enabling them see every obstacle as an opportunity could we have the next slide ne uh, lata who was this french military general who crowned himself as the first emperor of france he only crowned himself he didn't have anybody else to crown him who was that you yeah, forgot the boss is name here yeah. yes uh, again we have uh, anu uh, uh, shruti uh, saying that uh, it is uh, napoleon bonaparte now you know what is the biggest adversity napoleon had he was a very short fellow very short very tiny and he was always uh, uh, feeling bad that i am so tiny i am so tiny i am so short what can you do with jeans you can't do much about it you can hang from poles you can jump you can play basketball but that is all there is to it there can be an increase in quotient increase in height and that is where it is so uh, but he had a wonderful grandmother who said napoleon it doesn't matter whether you're tall or short what matters is how you think how you strategize and and your thought thought is what must make you a leader it's not your height thought is what must make you show who you are and she made him feel so confident of course uh, as i always say napoleon went a little overboard he became overconfident well that 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 happened but however that grandmother played a very very important role in napoleon's life she would uh, you know make him re- tell him a lot of stories and tell him that thinking and scientific reasoning is what would help you succeed in life it is not your whether you're tall or short fat or thin fair or dark that doesn't matter what's within you is what is going to make you succeed so when he was learning about when he was studying the story about uh, alexander he was very impressed about one particular chapter and that was when alexander's father had got a stallion bucephalus is the name of the horse and he that horse was the one which stayed with alexander till he breathed his last when he was 33 people were trying to control that stallion it was 
going berserk. It, nobody was able to control it. Alexander was 11 year old. He told his father, dad, can I try this? Of course, he wouldn't have called him dad. He must have been emperor. Anyway, so the father said, yes, why not? Try it. And that is important, parent. In, in such a huge gathering, a 11 year old asks an emperor, can I try? And he said, yes. That is effective parenting where the parent encouraged the child to take a chance in front of such a huge audience where all other warriors could not control that horse. And this little fellow says, can I? And the father says, yes. That shows how important it is for us to enable children to take guided risks. And it's okay if they make a mistake. It doesn't matter. And then this boy goes there and within seconds he was able to control that horse. Now, how did he do it? He realized that the horse was getting scared of its shadow. And so he moved it in such a way that the horse couldn't see its shadow and it calmed down. And he mounted the horse as the 11 year old and the rest is history. So this grandmother made Napoleon read this and said, see how scientifically he thought. And then later you will realize that all his tactics, which Alexander followed is what Napoleon followed. And the rest is history. Of course, there were a lot of things which moved after Alexander, but there are certain, uh, certain tactics that he used which were of immense, immense value even today. And that credit goes to the confidence which was built inside that little boy who was so short to say that he can rule the world with his intellect and his ability to have scientific reasoning and resilience. That is very, very important. Uh, do we have another slide, uh, Lata? Who do you think this is, parents? Anyone? Yes, it is Edison indeed. Very good, Shruti. You seem to be getting a complete score this, this evening. Well, Edison's story is very important for all of us as educators and especially as parents. Uh, there was a day when Edison's mother was called to school, an open house, and uh, the teacher was very, very, very annoyed. Thank you, Pramila. Yes, it's Thomas Edison. The teacher was very annoyed and he, she called Edison's mother and she said, Madam, I am not going to be able to teach your child anymore. So um, Edison's mother knew this was coming, but then she kept quiet and she said, yes, yes, what is it? She says, this is the report I can give it to you. And in that report, she wrote, your son has addled eggs in the place of brains. I cannot handle him anymore. The mother was so upset, she took the report, she folded the paper, kept it with her and walked out. She had tears flowing down. So Edison asked her, mother, why are you, what happened? Why are you having tears? She said, son, these are tears of joy. So he said, why? What happened? What did the teacher say? I thought she was very angry with me. No, the teacher said that you have such wonderful brains and you're so brilliant that the school is not able to take care of you. I'm so proud of you, my son. Come, let's go home. She took him by the hand and she took him home and she facilitated him with whatever that was possible at home. He could tinker. He, and the number of patents Edison applied for seems to be the largest even today. The largest number of patents were applied by him. So she took him home and said, you do whatever you want. And the rest is history. She encouraged him because he was so brilliant and he was a restless child. We term children as ADHD. We term children as hyper. We, and there are some parents I have seen get so proud. They say, oh, my child is hyper. Hai. It is wrong. It is a medical term. You cannot just define a child as hyper. And they say, oh, my child naughty. Hai. They, they think by saying somebody is naughty, you're paying a positive attribute. No. 
These are the words that we as parents have to change in our language when we are addressing children. Very, very important. And so Edison discovered one after another after another and everything, the entire credit goes to the confidence the mother had and she made him change that adverse situation of being dismissed from school into an opportunity where she, he could do whatever he wanted at home. The best part is one day Edison discovered that little crumpled note which was kept in one corner of a trunk. And he was shocked when he read it. He couldn't read. He was dyslexic. But still he managed to read it. And he never told his mother that he found that note at all. He kept it aside. And only when she breathed her last, he had those two tears and the sheet of paper. He said, Mother, if this sheet had been something else, I would have been something else. But you made those that, that, that particular word, you converted it into to a super brain which made me going and that paper was kept aside safely for him because she had kept it for god knows what reason not to remind him she had just tucked it away and by accident he had discovered it it doesn't matter whoever describes our children as whatever we know our children we know their strength we know their challenges we need to be present to both and encourage them so i have given you snippets about the lives of great people which is, and on, on, with the reason I have chosen these stories, parents, because I would like you to go back and read a lot more about Keller, about Braille, about Napoleon, about Tilak, about uh, Edison, about all these people. And there is just this one other trivia I would just like to share. We all know about Shivaji, the great warrior. Did you know from where he learned this guerrilla warfare and how he learned it? When his mother was pregnant, for some strange reason, she had a difference. She was a strong lady. Imagine in those days, she had an issue with the way her husband was dealing with the Mughals. She just walked out. She said, I'm, I'm not sure whether I want to be part of this. And she gave birth to Shivaji, not in a palace. She gave birth to wherever she was in the shelter that she had taken. And she would go play with this little boy in the hills in central Maharashtra. And she would play hide and seek. And for every game of hide and seek, she would teach him how to pounce in a different way. And did you know that was the birth of the guerrilla warfare for Shivaji when he was strategizing in those days against the Mughals with the, uh, with the army that he had. So all that I'm trying to bring forth today's point is we as adults, we as teachers, we as parents, necessarily have to develop the resilience within our children in terms of difficult times. Like for me, I will not even call COVID lockdown difficult time. These are times when I am able to discover the poet within myself. I am able to feel good about myself. And it's, it's a moment where you have to just feel and be good. And unless you show it by example, your, your children are not going to understand. Now I'll give you, I'll give you a, a few tips which we have to follow to raise a resilient kid. Now you may ask me, ma'am, did you do all this for your children? Maybe not. Maybe I was not so adept. I did not. I was young. We were all mothers when we were 20. Maybe we made our mistakes along the way. But today I ensure that this is being followed with my grandchildren. I ensure that the next generation is getting positive parenting, effective parenting, and to build resilient children. I ensure that my, my children follow certain rules, non-negotiable rules in terms of talking with children with a growth mindset. I enable as many teachers as possible. Somebody had asked me, how do you raise a resilient, how, as a teacher, how would you develop resilience in a, in a child? A teacher has to follow the language of the growth mindset. It is okay. A teacher has to come to terms with the fact that it is okay for a child to make mistakes. It is okay for a child not to clear an exam. There is no word as failure. Fail. It's okay. Heavens won't fall if a year goes past. A year is nothing. If you take the timeline of your arm, what is a year? 
it is all in the way we we weave in our conversations that we we can be good teachers i will just read this now one very important point as parents is the stronger you believe your resilience is and the the way you respond to adversity is the way that life's events will take place and you will orchestrate what happens at your home if you are going to say covid aa gaya abhi dekho aise hai waise hai paisa nahi aaya humko paisa kyun if it's going to be a never ending wine that is what the 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 that is very important for the children to wonder what is this happening why is mama whining the next is the weaker your aq the lower your energy trust me if you are not able to face with resilience your energy levels are very low and if your energy levels are low as a mother as a father as a parent as a grandmother as a teacher negative energy will perpetuate in every corner no amount of throwing camphor no amount of lighting samrani no amount of writing agarbatti will change anything at all so the adversity caution has to start from all of us now most important the 10 tips very simple tips is first please be strongly emotionally connected okay emotional connection with the children is very important and make them talk with one another do a zoom call do an online call make people connect stay connected like the grandparents some are, my children are overseas but we make it a point to talk every day and there is uh, in fact i would credit my spouse for that every day there are two quiz questions where he trains the granddaughters with every day there are two countries about which he talks there is something this is just an example i'm giving a personal example i'm not saying i am doing i'm saying whatever bus i missed with my children i ensure i board the bus with my grandchild that is all that i'm saying and it doesn't matter all of us are not ideal parents and we at 64 yes we we could have made mistakes i'm not saying no but now i have an opportunity to correct and take it ahead so emotional connect is important next is to be a good role model third is enable children to take healthy risks like how alexander's father took that healthy risk how shivaji's mother took the risk of telling him to jump from one rock to another rock to another rock he said go hide pounds hide pounds and through that simple game of hide and seek inadvertently the child learned ace guerrilla warfare next is most important is it's okay if a child makes a mistake it's okay if he drops it's okay if he messes up try and boost his self esteem with the, the the inner quotient of a child must not feel that mother thinks i am not good father thinks i am not good like and always avoid using the word but in your sentences you can say suppose a child has made a mistake in addition okay and there is a mistake in carry over addition or borrowing subtraction maybe the unit digit the child has done well but the tens place he has made a mistake if you are a positive mindset parent and if you use growth mindset in your language you will have to say you have done the units very correctly you have been able to subtract and add very well however when borrowing from the tens or when carrying over to the tens i think you have missed something yet it's a good attempt don't use the word but in the sentences you speak to a child when you use the word but you negate the first half of the sentence when you use the word yet you are giving a chance for the child to move ahead so growth mindset by carol dweck is a book which all of you can read tipping point by malcolm gladwell is another book which all of you can read these are all good books which will give you insight into how you can change your thinking towards positivity next is teach them problem solving skills very important um anything suppose there is a there is you could have run into a problem the water could be dripping something else could be going wrong you could tell a child how would you deal with this what would you do okay and make him think make him think along with you and give him some some anything can be done how would you make a, an aeroplane how would you make a frog jump with a paper make him do something and think about it and that will help next is 
it's okay to make mistakes. You just enable the child to understand. It's fine. Because all these days you are with the child in the house for three months, four months, five months. And it's fine to make mistakes. All of us make mistakes. We could even get angry. We probably shout. But it's okay. You could just calm down and say that is okay. I understand. This is why you behave the way you behave. Next is growth mindset. I can. I always can. The growth mindset thought process is very, very important. Next is involve them in some physical activity. It could be sports inside. It could be chess. It could be a quiz. It could be a word game. It could be pictionary. Play a board game with the child. I know board games for this generation is something very distant. We all grew up with board games. And even otherwise, I remember even when we would travel by bus, we would write the word Constantinople and say, write as many words as possible. Build words for the children. We have, I don't see this happening in many families. Being together, a family which plays together, stays together. Very important in today's times. Next is, make gratitude a habit. Be grateful. We are all so grateful to live in a roof like this. We are grateful to have a square meal. We have to be grateful for everything that's happening around us and be mindful. One thing which you can make children, make children realize is, even when you're cooking, today you start today, you say, uh, when you're, making you say that can we put aside one handful of rice and one handful of dal for some child some of the migrant laborers who have no food just a handful of rice every day ask your child to come and take a mutti ek mutti chawal that ek mutti chawal can move the earth you will ask me nitya ma'am is it going to solve world hunger no but it will solve a family's hunger and a small beginnings this is where, where they know how to give, to leave a legacy. So tomorrow when your child walks past, the child on the road without a roof will say, he gave me a meal. He has left a legacy. To think, to feel, to act with resilience is what we need today. And that is the need of the art. Very, very important. I am open to questions now. If any of you have some questions, I've spoken a lot. Uh, Ma'am, we have a question here, uh, which says, uh, today children are pulled up for not wearing uniforms in online classes by teachers. How do we address uh, teachers in this situation? In fact, I think uh, I would uh, subscribe to the uniform because that's what worked in all of Singapore and South Korea and Japan. If Singapore succeeded in online classes from January, mind you, the children have been in lockdown from January and school started this Monday. Today, the school started. And the report card has also been given by every school to every child, depending upon the way the child interacted in the online classes. Yes, children did get restless. They did get fidgety, but it was a discipline. You had to sit in the class with the uniform and I don't see anything wrong in it. I'm sorry. Okay. We, uh, I have another question, ma'am, uh, that uh, how do uh, parents with children who have a learning disability, how can they build resilience now because they have far more interaction with the children now that they're at home? So uh, how can uh, any tips for such uh, parents and teachers who are dealing with children with learning difficulties? I think you have to... Um see it's very difficult to include these children along with the rest of the class because they will get fidgety they may get quite fidgety and uh, uh, maybe you should give a certain guidelines to the teachers that when this child it also depends upon what kind of difficulty the child has is he does he have difficulty to read does he have difficulty to write does he have difficulty to fidget the, the teacher must know the child and send a separate note to the parent well in advance that these are the pointers you have to keep in mind when your child is learning. Okay, uh, there's a question. Um, there are online classes for uh, senior KG, kindergarten, and uh, they tend to teach them quickly on uh, 
how to tell the teacher to slow down the learning for kindergarten yeah i think that is very important the receptibility of the uh, the the child is i i don't know why but they are in such a hurry to finish that syllabus i think we have to write a letter to the principal or the parent has to write a a note to the teacher saying that you know uh, don't rush the child is not able to absorb i think it has to be individually done okay um, as a parent how can you deal with stubborn children especially during the lockdown i think a lot of parents who have teenagers may have this question <laughs> yeah it is difficult uh, i think you have to use the carrot and the stick approach where uh, you know uh, see everything is not hunky dory we have to be firm we have to be firm there are certain non negotiables there are certain non negotiables so we'll have to you know uh, use the carrot and the stick approach like uh, i would it's not a bribe i'm not encouraging parents to bribe children but there are certain things the child has to do the child has to do and if he doesn't do it there has to be denial there has to be a consequence of non negotiable activities not being performed and they have to follow it um there's a question from facebook ma'am from the audience that is watching live how do you deal with uh, slow learners now especially in an online class any tips for teachers on that actually uh, it all depends suppose i have a i i have a small school so i know that in my class of 10 or 12 i have this child who has this problem so i email his worksheet separately i don't bring him into the group at all because in that case you are making the child also feel bad you are also getting frustrated you cannot be inclusive in an online session all the time you have to be use discernment in this and do what is right for the child okay um there is a, a question that says that children today are lacking interest in online classes uh, they don't want to listen to uh, you know a lecture on say zoom or google because they have a lot of alternatives now on the internet how to handle such students yeah that's a big problem <laughs> you uh, it is difficult it is not easy so i think the online classes have to be of very short duration must not be more than 20 minutes and then give a break of 10 minutes and probably have a lot of ice breakers have a lot of energy boosters when the when the parent, when the child see when the teacher sees a child not pay attention in class she says does something to make them pay attention so when she finds that the online class is not happening she has to conduct the same thing how will she deal in a class same way she has to deal with this but yes there is a world of difference and we have to kind of maneuver our way through it one size fits all will not help i can tell you 100 uh, reasons but it may not suit we have a we have a viewer who said that activity oriented teaching may help in this situation yeah but activity oriented teaching when we did the parents said ye sab mat bolo ye leke aao wo leke aao ye rakho taiyari wo rakho taiyari hum nahi kar sakte so that when you do activity based and when you i understand what that person is saying when you are doing certain activities but how long can the teacher also sing and dance um we have another question ma'am today children are privileged and uh, they don't know what it is to not have something how can we build resilience in such a situation yeah that is where the parenting techniques come in no when you before they ask if you give they they believe that to have is their right so the parent must be able to say no effectively effective parenting is also to say an effective no to children and not feel guilty about it yes um there is another question that uh, the minimum time that parents should be spending with children every day i have no answer to this question after all this uh, 45 minutes <laughs> there is no minimum time there's no maximum time it's quality time and effective time for a time should not mm -hmm. be qualified with the word minimum 
it mm. has to be effective i think quality is uh, something that will make uh, the difference we have another question from a viewer as a mentor how can we encourage a child to do his or her work on time come again as a mentor how do we encourage children to complete their work on time again i'm telling you you have to set certain ground rules you know with the carrot and the stick approach that's what we do for my granddaughters now these things have to be completed so once we complete we are going to read a book together you know it's not about sweets or it's not about ice cream it's not about a bribe it is about an incentive it is very important to incentivize the children in the current situation because they are children it's not going to work otherwise you have to incentivize them not bribe there is a big difference between incentive and bribe when you do a good job the company gives you an incentive they don't bribe you yeah. so similarly when the child does something good you have to incentivize the child okay so more like a more like a performance uh, you know you're acknowledging their performance yeah That's make a deal with the child have a conversation with the child any child can have a right from Two years old, my granddaughter would say, "When I said that, Abika, can I have a conversation with you?" She'd say, "No, no, no, I don't want because she knows what is coming." It's very important to have a conversation with children and talk it out. Uh, we have another question. So we've spoken a lot about uh, you know about children and students from a parent and a teacher perspective. What are the strategies to remind ourselves to be resilient? Asil sees the moment, as I said, carpe diem. Do not believe as adults that this too shall pass. You have to tell yourself, what do I do in this to pass? It's not about, uh, you know, it's very easy to. Everybody says, don't worry, this too shall pass. This too shall. Yeah, it will pass. Days will go, months will go, years will go. Covid also will go. Five years down the line, you'll say, "Oh, in 2020, I did this. 1920, they did something. 2020, something happened." That is not the point. It is the point about yourself. What am I doing? Am I? Are you happy every day? Ask yourself, "Am I happy every day?" At the end of the day, what made me happy? What and simple rules to make your adversity quotient strong. Very simple rules is glad, mad, sad. What made me glad? Repeat. What made me mad? Avoid. What made me sad? Don't even go near it because these things happen. Basic three emotions happen in all of us. But at the end of every morning, begin with this is a good day. I'm grateful. Gratitude helps. Feeling grateful is really helpful. To be a gratitude in motion is what you have to tell your parent, uh, your children. I am very like for example when people say like today, I just went on to a classic mode. I I just got dressed up for no reason at all. I clicked photographs of myself and I posted and I'm happy. Now people may ask for whom? It's not for anybody. It's for myself. I feel happy. I wanted to be very happy and energized because I wanted to be full of energy when I'm addressing this session. Hundred things may have happened. That doesn't matter. Are you able to put it past you and move on? I think we should always remember that there are blue skies behind the grey clouds. It's not going to be grey all the time. Very, very true, ma'am. And I think this is essence for all of us here. And uh, the glad, sad approach is something we should definitely uh, look at taking up every day. um there's an in fact that's very interesting in fact you should ask the child every day what made you glad what made you mad what made sometimes children may answer sometimes they'll just turn around and say uh, like uh, sometimes my granddaughter's answer will be stop being so what she said something stop being something she said that i am not going to answer it's fine she is in a mood not to answer but there are days when she would choose to answer so it all depends but it has to become a habit with the family what made you glad that sir or ask your own self um there's a question here from a teacher who teaches the older children at college level He's saying, "How can we motivate college-going students about positive thinking, since they are also affected by other situations that are happening now? Perhaps you know the whole 
industry uh, with probably the recession or all of that how yeah they they will definitely children. need a, they will need a different handling i think more exercise and mindfulness would help uh, college going children they are going through a very tough period very very tough period because i know they have i have a lot of questions from parents who have children who are waiting to write the neat exam and uh, people don't understand it's okay for year goes and uh, i'm confidently saying because both my children had lost a year one lost a year at the engineering level one lost a year at the phd level it's fine they both are successful today doesn't matter it just doesn't matter but then uh, so when i when people say ah aap bol rahe ho i said nahi bol rahi hu i have gone through it you know and it's okay but they don't understand abhi neat karna hai abhi ja it's okay don't write neat this year write neat next year prepare for one year it takes time you know pair first and foremost the parent mindset must go unless the parent mindset changes it's impossible to make children believe in anything very true i think we can take uh, one last question uh it says uh, as a working mother how to focus uh, you know on your child it's very difficult now to focus on work child and your household how can we deal with it and stay positive i think it's time management and collaboration it's very difficult for ladies who have to manage everything themselves and there's no help i understand it's going to be it is difficult but uh, you'll have to work it out it i cannot advise that aise karo waise karo because we do not know the exact situation at home there could be help there could be no help and uh, there is no crash there is no babysitting available now it can, and whether they allow the child to come to work in these situations we don't know then maybe you have to negotiate with your workplace saying can i work from home or make a choice most important is the choices that we make so it's been wonderful uh, thank you abia for this uh, opportunity i i really liked uh, you know uh, dealing with adults and when it comes to children i just enjoy doing it and as i said what i couldn't do with my children i do with my grandchildren uh thank you nitya ma'am for this power pack session i think it took me down the memory lane to my childhood classroom when we say that stories are powerful and stories make an impact your story session storytelling session actually took me back to uh, my childhood classroom and it felt like sitting in a class and hearing a teacher out and with such beautiful short stories you passed on powerful messages about how to teach children to be resilient in the face of adversity i think uh, these stories were powerful impactful and passed the message around so thank you so much for being such a wonderful storyteller and not uh, you know i mean you can do presentations in different ways different methods through powerpoints with bullet points and all of that but none of it make an impact as much as stories make an impact and thank you for bringing in such a wonderful format so thank you from all of us at team abia thank you from all the participants and uh, thank you all the participants for joining us for this wonderful session do continue to support us in our master classes every monday when we have it from 5 to 6 looking forward uh, to more such sessions with all of you until then stay safe and take care thank you and thank you lata for facilitating the whole uh, whole thing and thank you anuradha and uh, abhi team wonderful thank you so much ma'am thank you, thank you.